turn it up. Welcome to the world of career colleges. Which university was created to educate firefighters and police, people on duty around the clock? Which university now graduates over 50,000 people a year, including nurses, educators, and MBAs from the largest business school in the country? <coughs> Which university uses 21st century technology to reach our military and can teach you the skills you need to stay competitive in this economy? University of Phoenix, because an educated world is a better world. seen commercials like this, ads like these, many places. Um, some of these schools are called career colleges, and some of these career colleges include a slide that will be coming up soon. Okay, they include DeVry University, ITT Tech, the Art Institute, and the University of Phoenix. These schools um, promise graduation, being competitive in the job market, Quick career and big money when you get a job from when you get a certificate from their schools. But like most things, these career colleges aren't exactly what they seem. But before we get into that, I want to give you a little background on these schools. Um, in the academic world, these schools are called career colleges. But in the business world, they're called for-profit schools. Because just like you can do with a company, you can invest on these schools and gain a profit. According to the National Center for Post-Secondary Improvement, for-profit schools have actually been around since the early, since the mid-19th century. So they've been around for a while. But their rise really gave way in the mid-1990s to now, because that's when um, government started cutting budgets, and so somebody had to step in to pick up that slack, and that was for-profit schools. Um, these schools offer anywhere from certificates to doctorates in 18-month programs, two-year programs, or four-year programs. These career colleges offer quick careers and big money. <clears throat> but today I want to expose to you the reality behind these ads and tell you the problems that they've caused for their students, specifically the high debts that they've left their students with and their lack of accreditation. Now the reality is that most of us will be in debt in pursuit of our education. So why am I pointing out for-profit schools? Well the thing is that their numbers are staggering as to how much their debts are. So this is some research done by, by College Board. And as you can see, for a bachelor's degree at a public school, being UCs and Cal States, 12% end up with $30,500 in debt or more. In private schools such as USC or Chapman, 24% graduate with $30,500 of debt and more. But at for-profit schools, over half of their students graduate with that much amount of debt, 53%. That's a big number. <laughs> um, and in the similar research but cut into dependent and independent students, you see similar results. For no debt at uh, public four years, again, you see Cal States, 38% graduate with no debt. At privates, 28% graduate with no debt. But at for profit schools, only 4% graduate with no debt. And so I asked myself why do these students need to borrow so much more than at traditional schools? And that's when I came across Senator Har Harkin's research. This is for an AA degree. For a career college, $35,000 for a program. Whereas at the community college at Denver, it's only $7,000. That's like five times more. Here, at Everest College, $46,000 for an AA. At, a, at Miami, I can't read that. And at this community college, it's only 6000 So you can see why they need to get so much in debt when it's not really necessary because there's community colleges that offer it and much less. But from DeVry University visits to my high school, I know some of them offer, some of them say that you'll make $40,000 after you graduate. So why are they not paying their debts? They're defaulting on their debts. 
Well, one possible answer lies in my second point, which is accreditation. Accreditation is essentially higher education's way of policing itself. There are no government bodies accreditors. They are bodies that are made up of colleges that seek to enforce a common standard of behavior of qual or quality. So there's a standard that they have to meet, and if they don't meet it, they don't get the stamp of approval. Now this relates to for-profit schools in that, yes, for-profit schools are accredited. Their schools have an approval mark, but their programs don't. <coughs> so imagine going, it's like going to Fullerton Community College, the school is approved, but you're studying to be a nurse, and you're not accredited for that. You graduate with a diploma, or the certificate, that's basically worthless. Um, and this creates a job placement issue. For employers are skeptical of hiring a person who isn't properly accredited. And if you're not hired, there's no income. No accreditation equals not likely to find a job. If you're not able to find a job, there's no income. There's no income, you'll default on your debt. And if you default on your debt, it goes a frowning face. <laughs> so, I'm not saying that these schools are bad, because I'm sure there's several success stories. But I do hope that I've made you aware of some of the financial kinks that they still need to work out, such as lowering the debt for their students, and seeking proper accreditation so their students can get job placement. Um, so if you ever question if a public education was the right thing for you, well, looking at the charts that were behind me, financially, be sure that you made the right decision. Thank you. So Eileen, what did you think? Um, I liked the video introduction. I actually thought it was going to be a positive thing, but it turned out to <laughs> dash on them. Um, it, I like how it relates to the audience because people, many people think it's the easy way out of college. I mean, I thought it was. Um, I like the statistics that you use, and you explained it really well, and how you compared public, private, and for-profit schools. And you seem to know your topic. The only thing is, um, I just thought it wasn't necessary to keep turning off the, yeah. the screen. Um, but other than that, I thought it was really good and it was very informative. Thank you. I didn't have any problem with your turning off the screen. That was perfectly fine. Uh, in fact, most of what you did was perfectly fine. Uh, I like the greeting as an introduction to the video instead of just starting in the video. I like that somebody says something. I'm actually starting my speech now, and then you, the video clip comes up, so we know that there's something going on here and that it's connected. Uh, the video clip's relatively short. It gets the attention of us, identifies the subject quickly. It took you two and a half minutes, though, to get to your thesis statement. That's a long way into the speech, and so you might want to be a little quicker on that, get to that a little bit earlier. I know you're doing a lot of definition and background uh, material, and I, th I thought that you did a very good job on that. The f there's a lot of substantive research in the presentation. I thought the table charts that you presented and the bar graphs were very good at uh, clarifying the idea that you were talking about. You referred to them appropriately. Uh, they developed exactly the theme that you were talking about in that section, and so uh, that was really fine. Uh, the maybe it could have, like I said, it could have been structured a little bit more in the preview, and uh, I could see that there's a topical division here. Um, mostly the, I think the signposts consist of the visuals and uh, a change in your your tone or direction while you're speaking, and I, and I like that. I think that works pretty well. Um, maybe there could be some language issues there that you could enhance it with a little bit, but it, it, that's just a minor quibble. Uh, speaking of minor quibbles, I'm saying this only. Look, I'm speaking from personal experience, and I know this might sound. I don't want. I don't want anybody to be embarrassed when I point out things. Pronunciation stuff is just awkward. You, you get caught doing something, and you feel like an idiot afterwards. And so, I, you're not policing something. You're policing 
something. Yes, and I could see I could see exactly you.